Hi, this is Dr. Broussard, and I wanted to just have a brief discussion on shoulder dislocation reduction techniques. First of all, the shoulder is said to be the most mobile joint in the human body. It permits movement of the arm in all directions, but it's prone to dislocation. The first documented instances of shoulder dislocation come from as early as 3000 BC when the murals depicting the Kohler technique for reducing a dislocated shoulder were made. In an anterior dislocation of the right shoulder, as shown in this image, the humeral head has been dislocated anterior, anteriorly relative to the glenoid fossa of the scapula. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint. It's stabilized by the glenohumeral joint capsule and the rotator cuff muscles, which surrounds the joint on three sides, but leave it lacking in support inferiorly. A blow to the shoulder may cause the humeral head to slip inferiorly out of the glenoid fossa of the scapula and then move anteriorly. Well, in 98% of the cases, the most common form of shoulder dislocation. Or it can go posteriorly, which is the second most common form. The movement depends on the direction of the force, actually, and the standing position of the arm and the humeral head in relation to the glenoid fossa and the pull and the condition of the musculature. Apart from the anterior and posterior dislocations, an inferior dislocation or luxatio erecta may also occur. The treatment of a dislocated shoulder is immediate relocation, usually under sedation by a variety of maneuvers. This image depicts the normal anatomy of the shoulder joint, which consists of the head of the humerus within the glenoid cavity of the scapula. The shoulder is a commonly dislocated joint. It usually presents as a deformity of the contour of the shoulder with extreme pain on movement of the affected joint and decreased mobility at the joint. The classic presentation results from a direct blow such as a fall on the affected shoulder with the weight of the whole body transmitting the force and causing the head of the humerus to pop out of the socket. With the Hippocratic method, the operator places his or her foot in the armpit of the affected side of the patient holds the patient's hands in both of his or her, her own and pulls towards the operator while gently applying traction to the patient's armpit with the heel of the foot. The limb is gently rotated until the humeral head pops back into the glenoid socket. This is done under anesthesia or at least under heavy sedation for two reasons. It's extremely painful and the muscles pulling the humeral head into its dislocated position need to be relaxed in order for the joint to be re relocated to its normal anatomic position. In the cochlear method of reducing a dislocated shoulder joint, the affected arm is pulled in the direction of the arm's longitudinal axis, followed by external rotation of the limb. The arm is then ad ADD adducted until a pop is heard or felt, signifying the shoulder has relocated back into its normal position. If this sound is not heard, the maneuver needs to be repeated or another way to relocate the shoulder joint is used. After reduction, the arm is put into a sling uh, to stabilize the joint. This allows the musculature to come back into its original place. This method may cause fracture of the proximal humerus or neurovascular compromise, so it's not currently recommended. Adduction of the upper arm toward the body with simultaneous flexion of the arm at the elbow joint at a 90 degree angle is the first step in what's known as the external rotation method for reduction of a dislocated shoulder joint. With little or no traction, the arm is then slowly rotated externally with reduction occurring almost immediately. Care must be taken during the external rotation. The operator should stop every few degrees for the muscle to relax again and allow the motion to continue. This is one of the simplest, simplest methods known uh, for shoulder reduction and in patients who dislocate the joint frequently this maneuver may be taught to their caretakers or friends or family so that they can perform successful, successful reductions themselves. 
The MITCH, M-I-T-C-H, technique is a common method for the reduction of a dislocated shoulder. In this method, the patient lies supine while the clinician slowly pulls the arm first to a 90 degree abduction, ABD abduction, followed by a slow external rotation to 90 degrees. This maneuver causes the muscles of the rotator cuff to relax and allows the humeral head to move back into its anatomic position within the glenoid fossa. The main advantage of this method over others is that it's nearly painless. Thus, it doesn't require anesthesia or sedation. There is an estimated 80% uh, success rate with this particular method. In the Stimson, S-T-I-M-S-O-N, hanging arm technique, the patient lies prone and the affected arm dangles from the side of the bed or from a hole in the canvas underneath the patient if possible. A weight of approximately 10 pounds is suspended from the wrist of the dangling arm, as shown in the image. The patient is allowed to lie in this position until reduction occurs spontaneously usually within the few minutes it takes for the muscles around the joint to relax. The scapular manipulation method, different in principle from other me methods of shoulder reduction, fixes the humeral head in place and rotates the scapula to accommodate and realign with the humeral head. The patient must be seated and two people are needed to perform the maneuver. The first person stabilizes the humeral head by placing the arm in 90 degrees of forward flexion and external rotation, fixing it in place by applying steady traction on the clavicle. Traction is applied till the patient relaxes. Then with the humeral head fixed in this position, the second person rotates the scapula. As shown in this image, the inferior tip of the scapula is pushed medially and, su and the superior aspect of the scapula is simultaneously pulled laterally. When properly applied, this method has over a 90% success rate and is also relatively pain-free. The SPASO, S-P-A-S-O, or SPASO technique, requires the patient to remain supine while the clinician grabs the affected arm by the wrist, lifting it up vertically, applying traction in the direction of the longitudinal axis of the arm while externally rotating the shoulder. The continued traction causes the musculature to relax in a few minutes and the head of the humerus can be nudged back into position in the glenoid fossa at this point. Additionally, the clinician may use his other hand to palpate the humeral head and push firmly posteriorly. When properly applied, the success rate for the SPASO technique is over 87%. The traction slash counter traction method of shoulder reduction involves a force applied in one direction, in other words, one person applies longitudinal traction on the affected arm by tightly grasping around the wrist, counteracted by another force applied in the opposite direction which is another person using a sheet wrapped around the patient's tor torso, as is evidenced by this image. The head of the humerus is disengaged from the glenoid by moving the affected arm slowly bet between external and internal rotations with steady traction and counter-traction maintained. The shoulder may dislocate inferiorly a condition also known as luxatio erecta, which results from a forceful hyperabduction abduction, of the shoulder. As shown in the figure, it classically presents as a hyperabducted arm with the elbow flexed and the forearm resting on top of the head. The head of the humerus may be palpated along the lateral border of the chest wall. It is extremely uncommon and may be reduced in one of two ways. The axial inline traction method of reducing an inferiorly dislocated shoulder requires two operators. The first one applies axial traction to the abducted arm 
and the second applies parallel color traction using a sheet uh, wrapped over the shoulder. Increasing the abduction while applying pressure on the humeral head superiorly, as marked by the star in the image shown, makes the reduction easier. This maneuver should obviously be used under adequate sedation with the aid of muscle relaxers. In the two-step reduction method, which isn't shown, the inferior dislocation is converted to an anterior dislocation, step one, followed by reduction of the anterior dislocation, step two. A posterior dislocation of the shoulder is also rare. As shown in this x-ray, the humeral head impacts on the rim of the glenoid cavity, resulting in a prominent defect on the anterior aspect of the head of the humerus. This is known as the reverse hill sacks, H-I-L-L dash S-A-C-H-S, hill sacks defect, and it produces this characteristic x-ray trough sign. Gentle prolonged traction is applied to the arm to achieve reduction for a posterior dislocation while the head of the humerus is gently coaxed over the rim of the glenoid. Simultaneous slow external rotation may ease this process. In post-reduction care, the shoulder needs to be stabilized for at least four weeks. Radiography should be done after reduction to ensure proper alignment of the joint structures. Movement at the shoulder joint is then restricted by putting it in a sling, as shown in this image, to allow a complete healing of the muscles and the ligaments, as well as the joint capsule for long-term stability. I hope you like this slideshow for a shoulder dislocation reduct reduction technique.